Well, I think it all started when I'd been drawing on lines, drawing lines on walls um, in the studio. And I wanted to take that outside. Um, so me and an American artist friend, we, we went up beyond the house, up onto the moor, and, and I found these strips of LED lights in, in a high street shop and worked out we could, we could power them by a small battery. And we, we went up camping and um, took the cameras and uh, got very wet, as is usual, and um, put them into the cliff face and photographed them, and it, and it worked. So, uh, so when Arts Alive Wales and Landmark put forward this, this project of working with the building, um, I went along and had a look and it was, it was a fantastic opportunity. Um, and um, it was quite exciting. Mm. Um, and I think I, I kind of approached it almost from ground level um, because when I, when I first came along, when you suggested to, a word element could be part of it. Um, I think I turned up in autumn and uh, one morning when the sun was shining and I sort of, I really vividly, vividly remember the pigsty with its light coming in through the open window holes in, in, the, in the stone and, and just falling onto the earth of the pigsty floor and um, making different patterns that were changing and, and, and sort of breathing in the atmosphere and and wondering what it was I'd <laughs> I'd stepped into. But <laughs> <laughs> that was it. The building was in such a state. The outside was in, um, and the inside was outside. Yeah. Was, you know, the rain was coming in, and the yeah. wind was coming in, and the wind was pushing the wallpaper. Yeah. It was peeling. Um, it was a very porous building at that point, wasn't it? And oh, oh, really? Very much yeah. so. And that was what one of the poems sort of became about the kind of once you'd raised this sort of focus on on the cracks in the wall, um, it was as if there was a kind of magnifying glass and I, I was looking in and seeing tiny, tiny little dust motes or tiny creatures that I wouldn't normally notice. So you kind of mm. caused me to look in a different way. I guess that's that's that causing to look in a different way is for me what it was about. There was this the, this edifice, the wall, the the threshing barn edifice in particular. If you if you were down at the bottom of the hill and you were looking up, it was really imposing. But there was this fracture down the centre of it, and and I kind of wanted to really bring that into focus and uh, and to show that this this huge wall was was about to fall down and. Uh, and to just to capture that moment, because it was going to go one way or the other, it was going to fall down or it was going to be restored. Yeah. And, uh, and moments were quite important, yeah. I think, for me. This, this sort of, how do you capture a moment? Yeah. Um, and that sort of being suspended in, on a cusp between it potentially <laughs> crumbling or potentially being reformed. And um, that made me really think about sort of the time I don't know sort of time frames because there were there were historical moments as well that kind of came into view but so there were long time frames and really short ones like the little insects that were still there in that moment mm. and then there were long physical perspectives when you walked over the other side of the meadow and looked at the light in the in the crack in the wall eventually when you put it in there and mm. then there were really close-ups, like literally pressing my nose up to the barn wall, you know, looking. So. <laughs> there was a human aspect of this as well, wasn't there? Because it was, it was a building that had been lived in, had been lived in for a long, yeah. you know, for hundreds of years. Yeah. And there were little aspects of that, either layers of wallpaper or the book, the book you found. Yeah, Alice Morris had inscribed her name in her school geography book. It was really poignant finding it on the kitchen floor. Um, and, and for me, that, that interaction between people living there and this, this, and the stone, the stone which has its own life cycle, this, this, you know, which is a, you know, millennium. 
millennial, you know, it's, it's just different time scales became quite important. But this was, this was focusing in on this very, very particular moment, yeah. which was going to change. We knew it was going to change. And, and it was kind of, it was an attempt, for me, it was a kind of stop the world for a second, just pause. We can't stop it, but we can mm. pause it. And, yeah. and in that, that pausing moment, you can, you, you, you were able to reflect a little yeah. bit, just, just to slow things down. Yeah, to I think what, sort what, of really, really noticing and some of what I did was, was quite meditative and slow. So there was an opportunity or two opportunities really to come to the place and just sit in different parts, outside and inside and be really, really um, quiet and um, just tune in to the feeling of it and the sensations of it. For example, the book on the floor, you know, and imagining mm. a girl in the 1860s who wrote her name in the book and what her idea of geography was and what her idea of the world was and what the idea that I have of the world now in 2020 is, or it's a few years ago now, but you know, where we are now with our sense of the world and also a sense of how we are part of it or what parts of it we really pay attention to and those we don't. Yeah, I, I, just going back slightly to the beginning of that, I mean, I had a real sense of you watching. I was busy climbing up ladders and putting lights in and trying to focus cameras in the rain and in, in the dark. Um, but I had a sense of you just kind of moving around the space and you were either you know, in a room upstairs or you were sat on a wall or actually you were right back in the meadow at the bottom looking up at you and Kellen. Um, and and those, that sort of, that pausing, that sense of it. And of course, you know, it's very rural. Um, but one of the photographs actually, you could, the orange in the back of the, um, of the sky um, I think it's the lights from Bristol. Oh, uh, yeah, a yeah. Boat. And so there's this, you're in the middle of the country, but also you're part of a bigger world. I, I also quite like the idea that, you know, you've, you found a book in, 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 the, um, in the building and that we ended up producing our own book. Yeah. <laughs> uh, through, through Goma Press, who were brilliant. Mm. Um, and we got it, we, we got the, poems and the introduction all translated yeah um it was a very uh it was a it was a collaboration with publishers uh i did drawings you did the poems we did the introduction mm. um so we had um looking through it and thinking how how pleased i am that, that, that we've got a book <laughs> yeah uh, you know we we have a book that is you know we've kind of given back to the place and also your drawings and um the lines i love the line the simplicity of a line that shows <laughs> contour uh, this, yeah. this one yeah yeah i mean yeah the, as well to... as the buildings and the sketches of the different angles of the buildings i find sketching kind of uh, you mean this 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 yeah one? yeah that kind of thing i i it helps you understand by sketching out things, you know, like sketchbook, mm -hmm. artistry sketchbook. Mm -hmm. I, I sketch out and it helps you understand there's, there's a lot of thinking goes into, it's not just sporadically making or gesturing. Yeah. It, it's, it's a lot of it is, is, is thinking things through and, and, yeah. um, and words become... Like the angles and stuff. Oh yeah. I also um, loved the fact that it was a, it was a spoken word event when we um we had the, the poems spoken in english and welsh carrie mm. marley spoke them in welsh and and that was amazing to hear some words of mine that you know took on a music that was was different and, and special um and also we had the, the sheep outside whose voices were at least as loud as, as ours <laughs> coming through <laughs> coming through the open window holes in the barn and getting louder and more excited as, as dusk fell. Trust. Look into the cracks instead of papering them over. Hold up a candle to free fall fragments. 
refuse to overlook what's in the shadows. Give up relying on the sticky mortar of reasoning. For nothing binds fast against the buffeting caress of rain and wind. And it's in the gaps, cracks and crevices that particles dance, wildly trusting the substantiality of air. People have some amazing responses that mm. you don't foresee. Yeah. And it's, yeah. it's sort of something about people being able to move around the space. And right now, I guess, in, in this different situation where moving around spaces has become, you know, such a feature of our life. We have to think about it carefully in the pandemic. But mm. oh, way back then, we could move around more freely. And, and people were paying attention to where they could move and the different smells and sounds and and shade yeah. and light and that sort of thing well, um, i just looked at some of the photographs because uh, you took me out of my comfort zone if i may say oh did i oh good yeah. <laughs> which is ironically uh you know it, it's it's speaking um in public i find it difficult uh, but mm. i you, you know a lot of people say you know it's part of the job and uh, and i prefer to be behind the scenes yeah yeah <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> so it drags like, you out yeah, kicking <laughs> and you wrote the, the the dialogue the duologue that we performed together and i was looking but at the when the building opened yeah two years later wasn't it two years later that's right mm. and um and by then the work had moved on because i then worked with um this brilliant this brilliant forge in in hokum uh, in norfolk where i where i live now and they'd actually instead of having a white line vacuum they created for me the line in steel just freestanding and so instead of a vacuum it became became solid became mass yeah and that we was had, so yeah, striking yeah we had that in the entrance and uh it was very interesting i looked at the photographs of that and all the people together and that was it's like wow people are really close together listening mm. to us and we obviously can't do that at the mm, moment mm. hopefully we'll be able to do that again yeah but it no, became... that was a beautiful sort of development that came out of of the of the drawn line and in a way i i mean i hadn't seen it until that moment and it mm. it really was striking and something about making the the absence in between stone of the crack into mm -hmm. something present in the form of the of the sculpture and the metal and um how that stood and how big how how its size was it was proportions were different i think well not mm. proportions but the size was different um you, you, you'll be pleased to know it's rusting at the moment oh, <laughs> which good. is different. and I, yeah. I had to make a decision whether to leave it um, yeah and, and to leave it waxed and covered or galvanized or to leave it to rust yeah decided it's a thick piece of of steel it's going to take years and years to, to disintegrate but i decided to let it rust and mm. to let that uh let that um disintegration to slowly occur it was also about change wasn't it and yeah. things really always being in motion and um and how we sit with that and I think a thing that became interesting to me as I got deeper into it was how we either inhabit a place or pass through it and what it takes to count as belonging to somewhere um, and in a way you know all creatures and all the non-human world that had a, has been there is, is it belongs you know but not everything gets written down in a form that stays and not everything gets put into the history books so there was um i came i did start looking at some of the history historical facts but i i felt that feeling my way into the place was more important actually than gathering historical facts however i learned that william savage landor the poet had lived or, or bought the estate the whole estate the, the priory included um in the 19th century and brought trees and sheep and so on into into the mm. area 
so it was really interesting and he turned up in one of the poems but otherwise it was kind of more about starting from what was right in front of us and then mm. maybe bringing imagination to perceive a few things in in the past or whatever mm. so uh, how do you think this has or how do you think the project influenced what you've gone on to do later it confirmed in me how much i love collaborating and i love the the way that two different art forms plus other things such as land building animals birds insects um other people coming together make such a rich concoction and and how there's a sort of growth that happens when you when you you listen to somebody else's ideas in in your case i was looking at what you were doing but also i was also hearing how you were developing it as it went and and you were talking mm. about it and i was also seeing you wobble on ladders and things and, and each <laughs> of these different things contributed to something in me that then grew so i it confirmed that and then since then i've um i've been able to do some other collaborations um and so one was a different thing but also to do with land but a city park part of the project idea was to sort of bring like refresh and, and bring more to people's connections with with it with with the trees with all the other things going on there so that that sense of the ecology in a city mm. and um i suppose also well other collaborations so i've recently worked with an, <clears throat> an animator on a poem i wrote called river song and mm. she's done a simple but rather beautiful animation her name's lizzie wheeler to go with it and um so that combination of visual and sound and words river song is a bit of a riff on opening and closing and it came out of lockdown and different ideas of being inside and being outside and then currently i'm working on and have completed but putting into it's in production is a play um, it's called Dancing on the Rusty Brown Carpet. And it was an experiment in what we can do online with theatre when there isn't live theatre. Um, it'll show to a live Zoom audience. Um, and it's kind of playing with the form and seeing what we can do um, with that. Um, so experimental. It's got dance and music and, again, animations and it's showing on the 3rd and 4th of October. Yeah, I think words have, words have always been important to me. I mean, I'm, you know, I studied literature um, and I read continually, um, but I read fiction and narratives, um, stories, um, which I find really sustaining. Mm -hmm. uh, they make me see things in, in different ways, give me different perspectives all the time. So, um, so words actually became quite important in that I made, I spent some time making a whole series of collages where words were coming through. Again, this sort of transience, things coming through, layers, palimpsests, they, they kept repeating, and partly because the last couple of years have been pretty crazy. And... Uh, there was a whole that wrote that that let a whole series of concerns rise up in me that I needed to to visualize and um, so that that became happened but the recently I've gone back to printmaking on the the start of this project making the the photograph up on the mountainside um, I then went off to the old by I'm sure print studios and um, transferred the image I'd taken up on the mountainside onto a, a plate, steel plates, a couple of steel plates, and then etched one of them through completely by leaving it in the acid baths for days. Um, and I've gone back to printmaking, but in a different way with, um, with collagraphs, and I'm creating a whole series of collagraphs, which again are fractured plates that are um, made, broken up, and then re- made um but leaving 
the lines of, of their disintegration quite visible. Mm. And that's, that's quite exciting for mm. me at the moment. Mm. And what's interesting is I, I'm also then superimposing some, um, some of Dürer's original sort of etchings back onto these broken plates partially. Um, so I've gone back to medieval images, which again mm. links mm. into to Lewin Kellin. Mm. And, and because do you remember the um, in the hallway? I mean, there's the most beautiful wooden carvings mm. that mm. I remember. Um, Kasia, um, yeah, and Mark was really excited about. Them, was, was you know was excited to show us. Yeah, um, yeah. The incredible, incredibly rich. Yeah, site. yeah. Um, um, as well and as that sort of dedication of the of the crafts people at that time and all the other sort of making and handmade things and and the kind of display of tools and things and objects that were found on site mm -hmm. is really beautiful and i suppose another thing that this project has led to is or at least it's connected in with kind of thinking about what we're doing when we're engaging as artists with a place um, particularly where it's got such natural beauty um, mm. in a time when you know our our climate uh, change situation is 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 very serious um, and just what we're doing and whether we're there to simply sit back and kind of bask in its beauty or whether there's a different way that we can engage and I think I kind of hoped that there was some engagement which was also changing me a bit maybe making me more sort of sensitive to that and and then enabled to to maybe act in a different way in everyday life mm -hmm. or you know change some of my behaviors or, or sort of communicate about what could happen to help things positively into into our future you know that's my hope yeah. anyway it has certainly made me think about conservation mm -hmm. and really engage with conservation and what conceptually engage with you know what what it was to conserve and what choices you make when you are conserving and what you're trying to do why you're trying to do that and it, it made me think uh very strongly about that but my overriding impression <laughs> was, uh, I think, the experience of uh, the the uh, the scouting it all out, then the first attempts, um, the the installations, and then the days, the open days, um, showing the works, getting them developed, but w was very much the site and the hilarity of it, really, because <laughs> um, we had you're up on the hill and you've got the most beautiful view um, and, and the sound was incredible but I mean Stefan used that in his um, performative piece yeah. and across the hillside was extraordinary. yeah yeah I love that um, but the the overwhelming sense was you know we, we had rain and we had sunshine and we, we had wind and we had very still moments and we had the crows and the sheep um, we also had each other yelling at each other, trying to say left a bit, right a bit, no, that's no good, and don't fall off the ladder. And <laughs> Inhabitants A stranger in this place, I want to say To the martins, whose nests are neat cups on the rafters To the bats, who have their own chamber in the roof to the spiders whose threads stitch walls to ceilings. To the sheep whose wool makes a canopy over barbed wire. To the snails stopped in the mossy slop of the sheep dip. To the crows who caw. To the ponies and the lambs who used to sniff and nuzzle the straw. To all at Lewin Kellin. To all who have lived and died here, thank you. <laughs>